How We Make Movies is brought to you by Microsoft Surface, Assimilate, Azo, Moviola, and Canon Hollywood. It's shot in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and hosted by the film collective We Make Movies. Your grandmother was so well documented. You said she had so many um, audio files of her personal arguments. She documented things herself through you know, her diaries. But there's also really beautiful B-roll of her from the 1920s when it must have been very difficult to get a camera. Um, why? Was there so much footage of her from that time period, and who was taking that footage? Great, the question is definitely it's it's uh, it's something which most people can't find today, uh, which is my great grandfather, yeah. who was an heir. He was a, he was a magnet, a tobacco magnet, yeah. and he built the largest mansion in New York City, it's still the, the the largest mansion freestanding in New York City, and he came here from Turkey penniless, and he became one of the richest men by the turn of the century. So uh, in uh, 1900, around then, 1907 or so, my great-grandfather came to this country penniless, but he became a uh, tobacco magnet, and he started Shinazi cigarettes, um, and he became very, very wealthy. And uh, one of the most interesting things of that time period, to me as a filmmaker, was he actually had a uh, photographer at the time, shoot his life in the mansion with his daughters. He had three daughters and his wife, which he kept very nicely in a little, you know, locked house. And uh, he was a Turkish, you know, very difficult person. So, uh, so there was a photographer which had great footage of their life as an heiress. And then later on, my grandfather, Morris Sanders, who was a terrific architect in New York City, uh, that my grandmother married very, very, very young. Um, when they went on their honeymoon, uh, Morris Sanders was uh, smart enough to take a 16 millimeter camera with him, and he shot their whole honeymoon all over the world. Paris, Egypt, Morocco, on 16 millimeter in 1928, 1929. So between those two uh, footages, Clark and I had a nice couple of hours of footage to edit the first act of the movie, which was very heavy in the 1900 to 1940 something uh, part of the movie, because the movie starts when she's born and it goes until she dies. So we had a, a tremendous amount of wonderful footage. And I have to say now that it was my uncle, Terry Sanders, who's a, a, an award-winning, uh, Oscar-winning uh, director, who donated that uh, uh, footage to us. And he made it possible to have that footage, uh, which he had found in a garage uh, somewhere. I, I asked him for footage, and, and it took him like almost a year to figure out that he had it. And he found it. And then my whole movie changed when oh, I had yeah. that footage, you know, and that was the, the biggest breakthrough. And he also was able to give us the uh, interview of Tina and him from 1999, 1991. And that was another huge breakthrough for us, which I would never probably been able to make that movie without her uh, interview that he conducted in 1991. So between those two things, uh, those two things helped a lot. And I was able to craft the vision of what the movie should look like and feel like. And Clark, who I can't live without in this project, uh, really helped me get to the finish line with all the, the footage that we had. Now, Clark, I was wondering, um, was there any um, anything special that you had to do in changing, like, I guess, the, the rate of the footage? Not especially. I don't know. I just dropped it in. Just kind of dropped it in and then, like, went from there. It's magic. But it's funny when he's talking about it. It's almost the opposite of most families, where there's kind of a gap from probably the late 30s. Mm -hmm. And in the 40s and the 50s, when you think kind of Super 8 cameras are becoming more prevalent, we don't have anything. And when we actually had to go out and buy stock footage, yeah. it was worse than the stuff we did we had from that era. Which was That's a very interesting point, oh. yes. We had such pristine footage that when we, because my whole goal was to tell the history of the United States from the 20th century through the lens of my grandmother who had basically bumped into all these great events in her life and met so many interesting people, celebrities, worked with some of the most interesting minds. And so I kept my structure to, to, uh, to, to have the enhancement of great events in the 20th century. And I felt like our, our footage from the first uh, 
30 years of her life were much more exciting.